Hi guys and girls and thanks for joining us again today on another Team LRF podcast. Uh, today I am joined by two-time Olympian Alison Testu. Alison, how are you doing? Thank you. Good, thank you. And you? Yeah, very, very well. Very, very well. Thank you. Um, Alison, you're back now, settled in France? Yes. Brilliant. And you're there for Christmas? Yes, and I actually live next to Paris. Oh, awesome. Awesome, awesome. How, how long have you been back home now in France? Uh, it's been since Monday. Uh, I went to Portugal to make my surgery, so I did a breast augmentation. Uh, of course, I, I can add that it's not, it has anything about competing. It's not for competing. It's just because I will not bulk anymore, so I will not gain a lot of fat again. So I decided to, to do it for my, for my personal life. Perfect. Oh, awesome. 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 And was that everything went well? That was all successful? No problems with your surgery or travel or anything? Yes, everything was perfect. Just the recovery is long, so I have to be patient. Yeah. But I started again uh, since next, uh, yes, last week to train uh, just glutes, because of course I cannot train the upper. But uh, yes, it's one week I've been back to the training. Good, 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 good. Did it, did it feel good to be back training again? Oh my god just <laughs> I was almost depressed like honestly I never stopped uh working out since 2016 so it's it, it was missing me a lot yeah for sure for sure for sure um and, and what I'm going to do Alison is I'm just going to rewind a little bit here because like, like I said to you before the interview like I'm very very aware of your competitive history like I've had uh, girls compete <laughs> compete with you and compete against you um but for, for the listeners, I, I want to just make people aware because people have really only seen your progress in the last couple of years. But, you know, before that, you know, in, in 2017 and 2018, you was competing, uh, which was with the separate uh, pro league, then the elite pro league. Um, and, and as an amateur, you was, um, you know, competing uh, in, in the Arnold and the world championships. And, and you know, to, to, to be honest, not winning those shows. Um, so if you if you take us back, Alison, to your competitive career, you know, where, where did it all start for you and so what, what then got you into competing? Uh, actually, it was completely by hazard. Uh, I met my boyfriend in 2014 and he was already a, a, an amateur men's physique. So uh, I jumped into this uh, realm actually by hazard because I saw him practicing uh, eating seven meals by day and I was like what is it <laughs> honestly what is it because I was completely not training just working not dieting nothing and I was like I don't understand this man like <laughs> and I tried it uh, because it kind of obliged me because like a lot of girls of 20 years old I was not eating very well because I wanted to be slim and I did not have the time to eat a lot because I was working a lot. So I was just, don't, um, I don't know, I can say that. But yes, dieting was not uh, my priority. Eating good either. So I was very sick. And uh, the point is that he obliged me to diet and work out. And actually, when I took his coach, the same coach than him, the coach told me, okay, you should try a competition because your body is, risk, is answering very fast. So that's exactly like, like this that I start uh, competing. And my first show was in 2016. It was in a small uh, exposition in Portugal, the Portugal classic, but no one knows. <laughs> so I started like this. Fantastic. Fantastic. And then, and then you went on to compete uh, a little bit internationally. Um, you know, you've done the Arnold, the World Championship, the European Championships. Um, and in those early days, I know, obviously, like I said to you, that like I've had many girls who have competed with you and against you. Um, you was always getting like ninth and 10th and 11th. And then there was uh, like in the same season, then you went on to the Europeans and, and you won the Europeans that year. Um, you know, did, was it discouraging maybe to get those placings or, or were you sort of just understanding that this is all part and parcel of, of the job? Yes, I was actually understanding all the classification I, I get because I am the type of athlete uh, who can be very dry and too muscular and too soft 
on the other hand. So, or I place very bad or I place very good. And actually when I place very bad, it's a hole because I am too soft, because we try to hide, hole because I am too shredded. And when we find the right look, um, I always been rewarded, mm, I think. Sure. But the point is that this is very hard for me to find the right balance. And actually, we're going to speak about that, I think, a little bit later. But in NPC2, uh, when I lost uh, in the pro show in Alicante, for example, the first pro show I've made, that's because I, I, was, I was too big. Because we hit, we carb up, and I was huge. So I placed very bad at it, too. Mm, sure. So when... When you became an elite pro, um, was you aware of, of the IFBB Pro League? Was you aware of the Pro League? Or was it just something that I, I want to do the elite pro, do well, and then move on? Was you always planning to move on? Actually, no, I, I planned to move on. Uh, it happened something in elite pro, I will tell you. But at the beginning, uh, when I started competing, I, I did just for the contest that I was targeting, but not for Olympia or not for uh, getting a future in it. Just, I wanted to do that show. Mm -hmm. And things happened and I get the Elite Pro card because I wanted to do uh, the Santa Susana European Championships, but I was not expecting getting the Pro card. So once I got the Elite Pro card, I was like, ah, oh, it's possible. Okay, <laughs> so what I can do later, uh, can I have a future with this? And now, at that moment, I start to think. But uh, after one year in Elite Pro, I did something very bad because I was Elite Pro, but from Portugal, because I started competing in Portugal and my coach is Portuguese. So I was Portuguese. Uh, I told them uh, that I wanted to move to NPC because I wanted to try Olympia. So I was expecting them to say to me, okay, good luck, goodbye. But I had no answer at all. Like I write them on social media, they saw my message, no message. I'm still waiting the answer now. And I was, okay, this is the great choice. Okay, goodbye. And that's how I took my decision because I wanted them to, uh, how I can say that? I wanted that they show me I was important to keep me, mm. but yeah. you can go. Yeah, no, I understand. So I changed without uh, without regrets. Mm. Sure, sure. And and then when when you swapped over, you done uh, the MPC Europeans. Um, and during that time, actually, um, again, people are very much aware of this. During that time, during twenty twenty, obviously, there was the the global pandemic. You know, there was uh, there was COVID. Um, and there was lots and lots of different things happening. Um, and your first show, your, your regional in France was cancelled. Um, what was it like prepping through, uh, you know, COVID and the pandemic? It was, um, it was stressful because we were in lockdown during three months. For us in France, it was March, April and June. So I started again at the workout in the gym in June. And I was prepping for, I think it's beginning of October. I think it was, yes. And I was like, okay, I will lose all my muscles and everything. I was, honestly, I was stressed. My coach told me, no, you cannot lose muscle like this. At, at the minimum, you will be flat because you keep working out with the with body workouts and uh, bands and everything. And you are just a bikini. So at the minimum, you're going to be flat, but you will not lose anything. So I was keep exercising during three months uh, with the bands every day. Like I was, I was so focused. I don't want to lose my muscles. So I was like, okay. And when I started again, the workouts uh, at the gym, I was really surprised because I've noticed that I gained in strength. Like I double of, of the strength of before. I asked my osteo and he, he told me, yes, this is because of the bands because you use the progressive strength. So of course, once you're back at the gym, your performance is gonna explode and the shape gonna respond. So I get my muscles in, the fullness of my muscles in 10 days because I was stronger, much more stronger. So actually after that 10 days in the gym, I was like, 
it's okay. It's okay. But, uh, but yes, the feedback of the judges in Alicante, uh, once I won my pro card, uh, it was that I'm, I was still a bit shredded and a bit too much muscular. Mm, sure, sure. When, when um, for example, when, when I prep girls over here for, for the UK shows, um, generally I, I will never bring them in as hard as the European shows, but I do find that the European girls are always a little bit harder and a little bit drier and a little bit fuller. Do, do you find the same? Yes, yes. Uh, the judges told me that there is no difference in judging and everything, but it has to get a difference between, for example, uh, uh, Americans and Europeans, because this is not the same ladies we got in front. So, of course, this is not the same standards. But yes, I noticed that in Europe, we are all, uh, yes, bigger, just bigger and uh, more shredded. And that's a little bit complicated because once I get to uh, my first Olympia, I've noticed that in real. I was in backstage and I saw the girls and I was, okay. <laughs> so what do we do? Because they were a little bit more, um, I don't know how I can say that, but fluffy. Mm, softer, a little bit softer. Yes, but yeah. softer, but when they pose, they look bigger on stage than us. I don't know how I can say that, but yes, they have more curves, they are more fluffy. More pop, they, they pop Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. They got, I think this is, yes, a question of water inside the muscles, but they they don't look depleted that, like us in uh, in uh, Europe. Mm, for sure, yeah, no, I, I noticed that as well. And, you know, the, the UK, um, like the UK scene over here, generally the girls who win the shows over here are, are a little bit softer. Um, they are a little bit softer. And then when they go over to Europe, they don't do as well because they bring the UK look to Europe and the Europe look is a little bit harder, a little bit drier, a little bit leaner, a little bit crispier, um, and, and maybe a little bit flatter as well, but like tighter. Yeah, that's what yes. I'm yeah. yeah, for sure. So you, you went and done your first show and your first attempt at the pro card was the NPC Europeans. Um, yes. And then you went on to win the card that day. Um, going into that show, Alison, like obviously you was already an elite pro. Did you feel any pressure going into that show? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, so much. Because of the bikini, because in elite pro we have the, the Russian bikini. So if you don't have breasts, implants, there is no problem with that type of bikini. But when you put the triangle, it's Ah, it's hard to shoot the judges for the for the curves mm. uh, on the on the upper body. So I was afraid of that. Changing the bikini, changing the heels, changing the makeup style because this is not the same makeup than Elite Pro, and disappointing the people who were seeing already me like a, like a pro. I was afraid to yes, to to not place to yes to to to, to fail. Not to lose, but to fail in their eyes, particularly. Sure, sure, sure. But but you went on to, to win your class. And then the way that they do the pro cards at those shows is all the girls then go into the overall. And there's three, it was three pro cards, wasn't it? Three yes. pro cards go into the overall. And um, you got <coughs> the overall that day, Alison? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, this is Ivana from, yes. from Spain. Uh, we won the overall, so she won actually uh, the big man pro uh, a few weeks ago. So yes, she won the overall amateur. Uh, the second, it was feed by Chloe. Mm -hmm. uh, Chloe yeah. uh, from uh, I think it's team team pro. Yes, Stéphane Beaugrand, team pro physique, I think. Yeah. And um, and yes, me, I was third. So. Sure. And and going in going into that overall, Alison, and you see all the girls there and they're all looking great. You know, it's probably still one of the biggest amateur shows I've ever seen um, in terms of numbers. It was enormous. Um, and and you're not quite in the middle. Did when you go into the overall and they're announcing the awards, did you think that you you had a chance? Did you think, okay, this I've, I've got this today, or you just wasn't sure? Hmm. Uh, honestly. I did not think I had a chance uh, on my physics because I always think on the physics we can always do better. Uh, but uh, how I presented myself this day because of my um, 
curriculum in Elite Pro, I, I had more stage experience, almost equal than Ivana, because Ivana was in Elite Pro too. Mm. But uh, with the stage confidence, I felt I had something maybe different. Mm. The experience of the stage makes you always look like a, more in peace, more smiling. And when I noticed uh, the videos after that, I saw that when you have experience, this is not the same thing that you give to the judges. Mm. So for the shape, I was not sure. Yeah. But yes, mentally, I was feeling great. Mm, sure. And is that something that you really think is like, I, I know as a coach, posing is so important. Um, is that something that you think maybe just tipped you over the head then in the, in the eyes of the judges? Oh, yes. I, th I, th I think the, the posing changed everything. But I think there is something more than just the posing. Uh, I think it's how you feel inside at the moment you are on the stage. Because you can pose great, but you sometimes you don't make any feel nothing to the judges. Sorry for my English. No, no, but the judges cannot feel you. So I think you have to really prepare yourself to show your best on that day and to show your emotion on stage. Because posing is good. And in NPC compared to Elite Pro, this is not so hard than Elite Pro because Elite Pro, you have to almost dance and everything. But, but uh, yes, you have to put your heart on the stage. And I think not a lot of ladies know how to do that. Mm. No, for sure. For sure, I agree. I agree. So so you go on to the, the pro show uh, the next day, wasn't it? I think it was the next day of the pro show. And, and you get ninth in the pro show. So your, your pro debut one day after turning pro is is ninth, which is great. You know, that's a, that's a fantastic debut. Um, but a year later, you go and win that show. Uh, and obviously your feedback from going uh, from ninth to first was was the fact that maybe you were too big and too hard and, and too lean. So going into next year's show and over that year, what, what did you change over that year to go from ninth, be too hard, too shredded, to champion? Actually, a lot of things because we went from nine uh, in 2020, but right after we did Romania, when the where the the judges told me, okay, for Romania you're gonna come soft. So I came soft, but the point is that I finished second, so it was better. Mm -hmm. But compared to Francesca Storico in Romania, I was looking like a baby in the um, in the glutes. Because we try, of course, to hide the physics. So I had not enough muscles and glutes for them to pop if we soften the condition. Mm. So I was like, okay, I need to do a book and everything. My coach was telling to me, no, 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 no. And I was, yeah, yeah, yes. So, okay. One week after we did the San Marino Pro in Italy, and I finished out of the top five because my, my body was flat, watery, and skinny at the same time. So I think my season was over, I was too tight. Tired. So completely tired. deserve a classification. And after that, uh, we went to a book. I won, hmm. I won the decision. And uh, we tried to put more mass to the glutes uh, to try to beat Francesca because Francesca, was the first in Europe and she got mm. bigger density in the glutes. But the first competition of 2021 was in Portugal. Uh, I did the Mr. Big mm. Evolution Pro and I handed eight. So I, I was, yes, compared to Romania, I, I was doing worse, but I was looking better and I noticed that not just the glutes have grown during that book, but everything. And I stopped training everything, no quads, no back, nothing. Mm. So everything has grown, the shoulders too. And I was like, okay, so I cannot eat a lot and I cannot train a lot. My coach was agreed and he told me, I told you. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So after uh, Portugal, we stopped all the workout except the glutes. So since the Portugal uh, pro, I don't train like a bodybuilder <laughs> anymore. And I don't sleep a lot. 
and we try to soften the condition by uh, adding some ice creams and cookies. Mm, sure. And during that period, you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't um, long, obviously, before the the Europeans. Um, did did you enjoy training during that period, like when you couldn't train hard and when you couldn't train heavy? Because I know you have said you are somebody who likes training hard and likes training heavy, and you like the dense muscle and you like the condition. During that period, I know needs are a must and you have to do what you have to do, but did you enjoy training during that period? During during the um, the depletion? Yeah, during the, when you're uh, trying to get soft. No, 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 not at all, because every day was glutes day. So this is the hardest day for a girl because this is the, the day where you need to put the, more, uh, the most intensity. So this is cool, but when you do three times a week, the same start to be boring. And I had five workouts a week. So the two other, it was metabolic workouts and high intensity training. So just jump, squat jump and everything. Yeah. And the food was not high because we, don't, we did not want to fool my muscles. So it was boring. Honestly, I was praying every day. Like not eating a lot because my coach told me you bikini, you cannot grow, you cannot train hard, it's over. And I was like, okay. The only positive thing was the ice cream. <laughs> I think that's all. That's all. And every night. Yeah. Yes, every, every night. Yeah, every day you look forward to it. Yes. <laughs> I was so happy because all my day it was um a small tiny little of proteins because we reduced the proteins a lot mm. like i had uh, i think it was 40 or 50 percent less protein than before and of course because protein is the city mm. i was hungry yeah and every day i was only speaking to my boyfriend and telling i want to eat i am hungry <laughs> <laughs> and crying yeah sure it, it it's hard you know especially when you want to train hard and, and and you know you want to train hard but you can't because you know you have to get a look on stage uh, yes. that, that you want to win you know because it's a fine balance like i want to train hard and I, and i want to win you know so what one do i what do i go for yes and in my past i always present the shape i liked but every time it does not work. So I was like, okay, don't be selfish. Mm. Think about your coach. <laughs> Maybe you want to have a reputation or something. So uh, uh, in fact, with my coach, we work together. I have no um, quality of uh, coaching. I don't do coaching at all, but we just discuss every everything we do together before putting it to action. So, um, so yes, I wanted maybe to make him win. <laughs> <laughs> no, sure. And and the thing is, you went on to the the MPC Europeans, and and you did win. So even though it was hard and it was challenging, and emotions were up and down, clearly because you're having good days and bad days, you went and you got the result at at the Europeans. Um, and and how did that feel? You know, because you know you you started a journey where you you didn't you know some people start this journey and say i want to go to the olympia but that's not obviously how you you started you started because you wanted to try a local show you know but fast forward you know four or five years and now you're going to the olympia so how, how did that feel to get that first place and be told alison you are going to the olympia honestly i was i was not believing at all uh because yes as you as you said uh, Olympia for a lot of people is the, the dream at the moment they even don't start working out mm. but me it just came right after because of experience and everything and I was not thinking I deserved to go there and when I realized I was like okay you did not do a lot to prepare for Alicante you eat ice cream and I was I was shared between happy and between this is not fair. You see what I mean? Like you go to Olympia, but you give your strict minimum at your maximum. Mm. And when you give your maximum and you suffer and everything, you don't go there because you, you look too much. Mm. So I was like, 
okay, so we go to Olympia and we're going to present a soft look. So honestly, deeply in my heart, I wish I could qualify for the Olympia as I like to be, hmm. but it's not. No, for sure, for sure. And 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 with that being said, then Alison, would you would you ever consider moving up a class because of because the way that you like training, the way that you like to look, being lean, being hard, being dry, being big? It, it, would you ever consider moving the class? Yes. At the beginning in Elite Pro, uh, every judge was telling me, you are too much for bikini, too much for bikini. Go in uh, in uh, body fitness because it's the equivalent, of course, of, of figure, but this is smaller than figure mm. in Elite Pro. So at the beginning, I was thinking going there. But when I saw the, the Elite Pro uh, body fitness, I was like, mm. they are huge. Mm. I was like, no, 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 I don't want to be like this. So I said bikini and in NPC too. In NPC, I was convinced that the bikini were bigger than in IFBB mm. elite. But this is almost similar in amateur. Different muscul muscularity, different balance, but this is almost the same uh, uh, softness. Softness. Yeah. But uh, now, after the Olympia uh, of this year, I said to my coach, if I don't qualify for 2022, I'm going to go in wellness mm. because I don't train legs anymore since a long time. And uh, the last book I've made without training legs, uh, my, uh, my lower body was huge. Mm. And I saw that maybe I could have a potential uh, in two or three years for wellness. Sure, yeah, and wellness is a very fast growing class. Lots of, probably the fastest growing, you know, before only two or three girls, now many, many girls doing this class. Yeah. It's a very good class as well. Yes, and I really I really like this class since uh, Elite Pro, because in Elite Pro we have wellness since a long time. And I was always watching at wellness like, Oh, I like the glutes, I like the shape, they look healthy. So many of them don't look too healthy because they look a little bit too much uh, women's physique. Mm. But the, the, the nice wellness like Angela Borges or Francine Matos, mm. I look at that and I, I am like, okay, soon. So the deal with my coach was, if you don't qualify for 2022, you go in wellness. And the first show after Olympia, I qualified for Olympia 2022. So I don't go in wellness, <laughs> but maybe next year, if I don't get my qualification for 2023, maybe I will start to go to wellness. But uh, if my coach deal exactly like this year, I think I will never go to wellness. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, sure, sure. So in terms of, in terms of a... Um, a different class perspective obviously people who who don't know uh, that the body fitness is the same as figure um so figure is obviously the the title but in the elite they call it um body fitness but there are many elite pros now coming over um to the pro league the, the um i forget the lady's name who's got her twin who competes in figure and she's won a lot of a lot of the pro shows recently as well um, yes it's yeah. Teresa, Teresa, uh, in, in Yarkova, something like this yeah, and, and her twin sister. sister. Her twin sister who competes as well. Yeah. So a lot of people don't, you know, who who follow the 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 pro league to go to Olympia don't understand that the, the elite league is still an incredibly high level and there's still incredibly good athletes in, in that who uh like Ghana who, who who was winning the Europeans and who was winning the world championships. I don't I'm not sure if she's competed for a while, but she was very good and I've seen her starting posting up potentially to come back as well. So I think there's still a lot of European athletes who who will be pushing for pro cards and I think the European status in terms of bikini wellness um, women's physique figure will, will just rise because those elite pros are eventually all look like they're coming over yes exactly uh, I think I think the girl who will start um, a trend to move to NPC like opening the the, the way mm. uh, it's Angela because Angela Borges was, was the the image mm. of Elite Pro because she was the, the most title 
almost the most title uh, athletes in Elite Pro. We are we got uh, Yana and Dmitro too. Yana Kunetskova and Dmitro in uh, men's physique. But it was one. She was sorry one of the most titled uh, athletes. And once she moved to Alicante 2020, uh, people in Elite Pro start to open the eyes and. Okay, Alison is gone, Ivana is gone, mm. Angela is gone. Okay, so maybe we can do something there. Because the, the thing that everybody is repeating every day to an Elite Pro athlete, because I live that so I know, is Elite Pro is cheap. You are not a real pro athlete. You are not an IFBB Pro League athlete. Mm. And the point is that hearing that every day, uh, you, we don't care if you win, you work nothing because you are a pro. Uh, uh, it's still like this inside the throat. And of course, you want to give a pro to prove that they're wrong. And uh, yes, mo most of the athletes that give a pro, they won straight away the pro card on the other side. So yeah. we are not so bad. Yeah, <laughs> not yeah, so bad. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So. I wanted to touch a little bit, Alison, um, because because you are still young. You know, you are still young. You still, um, like you say, you have a boyfriend who is who is involved in bodybuilding, or you had a boyfriend who was involved in bodybuilding. Are you still together, Alison? Are you still together? Yeah. Yes. So, so you have you, you have a relationship. You you are not a coach. Um, so, how do you fit bodybuilding in around you know working and and traveling and and everything like that? At the beginning, I was working in uh, in a shop of clothes, and that's how I met my boyfriend. He was working in the shop in front of mine, so it was not the perfect job to fit bodybuilding, but I was still uh, succeeding in following my diet and everything. But after that, I decided to change my job to find something maybe more. Um, similar to what I am inside. So I was working in computers, but I, I had too much hours weekly. So when I had day offs or holidays, it was just to go to compete. I had no holidays during three years, just the day off to compete. Mm -hmm. And the Monday straight back to work. So I did not last more than three years like this because I was very tired. So I quit my job. And I start giving posing lessons and working for my sponsors. And actually, I was like average for the monthly salary in France, but just average, like surviving, that's all. And after that, I saw that the posing lessons were working really good. So I expand in the, in the USA, in England, uh, in Europe, and everything. And I did succeed to have the minimum salary of friends just for just with the posing lessons and the rest was was completing and since that moment now i am just giving from uh, the sponsor of posing lessons uh my ebooks uh of posings and everything Fantastic. so just like this so i am very happy because i do what i like the most teaching posing and i am totally free to go to compete and I have enough money to travel to, to do the competition. So I'm very, very happy. And just today we, we moved in our new house where I opened my space. This is the first day. I opened my space for posing lessons. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give posing lessons in a room with a lot of mirror inside my own house. So I'm very happy. Amazing, amazing, well done. Yes. Well done, yeah. It, Thank it, you. Uh, did, did, did you find it, uh, for people who are, who are in, a, in a similar position to yourself, Alison, did you find it scary when you, when you left employment? Was, was you worried? Hmm, actually not, no. I was feeling free, like, uh, who? <laughs> I was feeling like uh, totally unbeatable. Like, uh, I've, I succeeded in the, the day number one, to follow 100% my diet, all my workouts, everything. And I was like, if you can do that, you can say, no, I do. I want to change life. If you succeed in following the plan uh, that someone gives you for bodybuilding, I think you are able to do everything because you can put pressure to yourself to do the correct thing. This is the way I think 
because I think the bodybuilding changed a lot of things in my vision of life. Like um, I learned how to say no, and I learned how to say, I want that, I'm going to look for that. So I was not scared, scared, sorry. No, no, I, I, I agree 100%. I think bodybuilding is the best sport to teach you that every little thing matters. Like every little yes. bit of effort that you put in matters. Lifting a little bit heavier, being a little bit more adherent, doing a little bit more cardio, it all adds up to the Olympia, for example. Exactly. And this is the little bit too much or less that can change everything. Hmm. I noticed that, yes. No, I agree. I agree completely. And and, and, and as I said, Alison, you, you, are, you are still young, you are still uh, like, like re reasonably new to the sport. You know, you, you haven't been bodybuilding for 10 years. You know, you've only been bodybuilding for uh, a short, shorter period of time. When, when you have those difficult days, like people who are experienced and who are more experienced can always go back and say, you know what, I've done it 10 times before, I can do it again. What, what is your mindset on those days where you find it difficult to be motivated because not everybody is motivated all the time and what what do you what do you pick up on and what do you go for when you don't feel motivated uh it happens at the beginning uh when i started bodybuilding that i could lose motivation but i was doing it anyway like uh i switch off the brain and i go like uh like a discipline robot mm. and i think this is the only way possible because uh, if you if you follow uh, the lack of motivation, you will never go anywhere in bodybuilding because it's hard. So if you are not motivated and you start to think too much, I think it it's useless to to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, but when you, you see what I mean, when I was praying every day after Portugal to fit bikini. I was still going to the gym, doing something that I don't like to do. And I was like, anyway, like mm. I was crying every night. And after that, anyway. So if you don't think like this, I think bodybuilding is hard. Yes. Mm. And um, now I don't speak about motivation anymore because I do that anyway. I wake up in the morning, it's like brushing the teeth. Mm. It's a, it's a habit. It's not a, yes. Habit? Habit. habit yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a habit. I go, even if I am not wake, wake up uh, perfectly, I go, I do my thing and uh, I go back home. Don't think at all. No, I agree. I, I have, I have a saying, which is standards over motivation. So you have the set standard of, I wake up this time, I do my cardio, I eat my meals, regardless if motivation is up or down, standards are there and you follow those standards every single day. Yes, exactly. Actually, it's like a job. Yeah. You go to you need the money, you go to work and you come back home. Mm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. No, that's that's fantastic, Alison. Thank you. Because there will be a lot of uh, young girls and young girls, young girls and young guys who will listen to this, who who will have days where they're not, they're not motivated, who will have days where they're not feeling great and not feeling strong and they're very hungry and they're very tired and those are the days where they think is bodybuilding really for me and that's the days like where you say you have to switch off the mind cancel that voice out and just get it done anyway exactly and um and sometimes i ask myself uh i ask myself if i am if i if i am going to keep going but uh i think i just like to complain now because of my situation, one week before Alicante 2021, I told to my uh, coach, I don't want to go. <laughs> I was like, I look like a shit. I don't want to go. And he told me, oh, stop doing the diva. And I was like, but honestly, what, what is that look? And I honestly believe what I told him, like, I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. And even there, I was like, I don't care. I don't go on stage. I don't want to go. And once I was in backstage town and everything, I was relaxed like this because I did not like myself. So I was telling to myself, anyway, <laughs> anyway, we're going to go there anyway. And finally, I was really surprised. So, yes, we, we have to stop the, the mind, particularly for bikini, because I spoke with a lot of bikini in Olympia. And after four or five years of hard training, 
we are maybe 80 percent in the same position right now so for example uh, not uh, laura lee or jennifer dory but isa piccini which is here since a long time mm. actually right now she don't train a lot uh, i think francesca she don't train anymore at all mm. uh, a lot of ladies don't train anymore yeah. no for sure for sure i know I know Francesca had the same issue and she was told, especially when she went to, because she was winning every show in Europe, every show winning, 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 and then go to the Olympia and be third call out, fourth call out, you know, in the, the first Olympia. So I know for her, it, it, I, I remember seeing her saying that she, she must downsize a lot, not just a little bit, but a lot. Because again, in Europe, winning, 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 when you go to a show and you have lots of wins, you think I'm going to do well. And obviously very disappointing. And but but she knows obviously why. So same situation as, as yourself, you know, where she had to downsize that little bit because the European girls are bigger, harder, leaner, you know, for sure. Yes, exactly. Yes. And fast forwarding now, listen, we've got the we've got the 2022 Olympia. Um, you've got your invite secured for that, which is fantastic. Um, what's the game plan for the, the 2022 Olympia? Okay. Uh, for the 2022 Olympia, we don't know yet. Uh, we are waiting currently the invitation for Arnold Ohio because I put my application form and I wait the list of bikini if maybe there is one chance. So if I am accepted, we're going to prepare for March. If I am not accepted, we're going to prepare for uh, Pittsburgh and New York Pro. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, anyway, we're going to go to uh, Olympia. So, so yes, we're going to see after that how the shape uh, evolves. Because here, uh, right now, I am uh, recovering from the surgery. So I just train glutes and do, do my cardio, which is not really different than before. <laughs> but I don't do hit, So I am not uh, lean. I am not... Um, I am not a good con I am uh, I have not a good condition right now. Mm. So let's see the shape after that. This is not too looking too bad, and uh, and we adapt. Sure thing. What um out of interest, Alison? How how far do you go away from stage weight when you're not competing? How how far in the weight? Uh, yeah. So say for example, your stage weight is X and your off season yeah. weight is Y. Uh, depends. So I will I will tell you. For example, my stage weight in Olympia was fifty five kilos, and I am one seventy tall, one seventy centimeter tall. Yeah, sure. And what about your off season? Uh, the off seasons right now, I don't know. Yeah. But I know that my last book I, I went until sixty three. So what's that? Uh, eight eight kilos. Eight. Eight kilos more, but uh, in the first week I gained ten kilos more. Last year <laughs> was totally on purpose uh, from my part. This, this uh, it was the first week out of uh, jet plan. Mm -hmm. My coach told me for one week you do anything you want, and I was like, okay, I want to eat uh, croque monsieur and cookies every day. So I did it, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> and I took 10 kilo in one week sure. and I lost the line of course but it, it was not binge eating it was just I wanted to eat the things that I don't eat usually mm. without caring or without binging but it was of course uh, not clean macros or anything so mm. I went like a ball very fast <laughs> so and never again of course because I lost all the lines uh, at the end of 2020, so I had to work even harder to take back the waste mm. because the, the intestines were completely out, so the belly was bloated, the lines were awful, awful. So now I, I did a reverse diet at the end of my season and before my surgery to stay very clean. And uh, and I got one free meal a week, mm. so I I think my weight right now could be 57, 58. Mm. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm, From what I see, 
Absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm never when when I'm working with uh, the bikini girls. I'm never a fan of them gaining loads and loads of weight in the off season, just because again, as a bikini athlete, you're going to diet that down and you're going to lose a little. There's no point in getting big yes. to just diet down. Yes, exactly, and we understand it because if anyway, if you do big bulk as we did, it was not a, a, a fatty bulk; it was a clean bulk. But I went until 63 kilos, and in the Portugal Pro, we noticed that I gained too much muscles, so I had to eat less and less and less and do more cardio. So there is two schools. Or you do big bulk, you gain a lot of muscles, and after that you cry every day, or you cry every day of the year because you don't hit much, and you don't train a lot. So I don't know, I don't know what i'm go what i prefer honestly mm, sure sure i don't know but uh yes no book anymore for me it's over no fair enough fair enough and you've mentioned many times Alison, that you had to eat ice cream on prep you know yes what what was your favorite one what was your favorite ice cream hmm. uh i think it's the um, white speculos i think this is a white uh white chocolate speculos uh, from uh, lotus Yeah. I think this is my favorite. Uh, and the, the Ben and Jerry's rainbow cookie dough. Cookie dough, yeah. Yes, because there is the center only with cookie dough. And I was tempting to eat almost just the center. It's only <laughs> one ice cream. So I was like taking more of the cookie dough than the ice cream. He said, what ice cream you choose? I choose. <laughs> Fantastic. But uh, yes, no, uh, the white chocolate speculos. Brilliant. I'll make sure I get that on my next cheat meal. I'll get it. And, uh, ah, it's awesome. Yeah, brilliant. brilliant. Alison, thank you ever so much for your time. Thank you. um, Alison, if people want to contact you for posing, if they want to follow you, if they want to drop you a message and maybe bring you on their podcast, um, how can they get a hold of you? What's the best way? So uh, for booking a posing lesson, I have a link in my bio on Instagram. So my Instagram is Alison Pestu. So there is a link in my bio. You have all the link to buy the ebook of posing for Elite Pro. I did not do the ebook for NPC yet because I was not feeling so ready mm -hmm. to write an ebook for posing. Uh, and you got the link for my website to book directly a, a, a place with me, a spot with me and choose your time. Brilliant. And for posing, Alison, just show the listeners where you do both Elite Pro and MPC. Yes, but but I don't speak about that on social media. I don't speak in stories because I know that there is some world between the Federation. Hmm. So let's go and say that I do posing for bikinis. All bikini. And all wellness. All wellness. Brilliant. All bikini and wellness. That's great. That's yes. Great. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> No, Alison, thank you ever so much. It's been a, it's been a pleasure have, having you, Alison, and it's been very, very enjoyable. Um, so thank you ever so much. And guys, and girls, if, you, um, if you've enjoyed this podcast or the, if you're watching on YouTube, please like, share, subscribe, comment, tag myself, Team LRF, and tag Alison in this podcast, and we look forward to hearing your thoughts. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Alison. That is 